Hey everybody, welcome to Peppermint and Tobacco, a YouTube channel all about home fragrance, especially candles. Today I'm going to do an empties video featuring uh, Yankee Candle, Molten Brown, and William Sonoma. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a preview of some scent works from the Orchard Hayride Candle. I've got some odds and ends to share with you and an update about our ivy rooting in an empty candle jar, so stay tuned. Thanks everybody for coming on back. If you're new to the channel, I'm really glad that you're here. We've had a lot of new subscribers recently and so I want to say an especially warm welcome to them. If you're new to the channel, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. Once we hit different um, thresholds like uh, 300, 400 subscribers, I do a drawing and if you enter into our newsletter, which really isn't a newsletter because I haven't sent any, essentially it's a way for me to keep your email address safe and reach out to you if you win the drawing. So um, sign up for the newsletter to be entered in for the drawing. Y'all, the last person I did a drawing for the 300 subscriber, I um, use a random number generator online and the, then I pick, like they do the random number generator and then it gives me a number. I pick that number out of the list and I reach out to that person by email and it's peppermintandtobacco at gmail, so be on the lookout for that. It's not spam, I promise. But anyway, I reached out to them, but I haven't heard from them. And so if I don't hear from them by the end of the um, evening today, then I'm going to pick another name. Uh, so be on the lookout for an email from me uh, if you have signed up for the newsletter. And if you haven't, sign up. There's only like 50 people signed up, so the odds are pretty good. You get one in 50 chance of getting um, a $10 um, e-gift certificate. And I do drawings on a monthly basis, and when we hit those 100 milestones. So thanks everybody if you are a new subscriber. And so if you are a viewer and not yet a subscriber, um, hey, consider subscribing. So this is a hobby, but also like I'm trying to like, you know, turn this into a side hustle. Um, so uh, it would be really great if you uh, click subscribe. Um, new videos come out like several a week. I haven't gotten into a really um, regular um, posting schedule, but you know, I do it as often as I can, bringing you the very best in home fragrance and lots of odds and ends uh, from a well-scented life. So, okay, let's see. Um, let's start with an update on our ivy. So, if you all recall, I have an I, I have ivy plants all over outside. Ivy makes a great filler. So, when I design um, outdoor plants or even ones indoor, I think about thriller. So, something up nice and tall. Filler, something mounding, and then spiller. So, something that will spill over. And ivy is a great way to have a spiller plant. Now, ivy is fantastic outside here in North Carolina and it's probably great in most of the places uh, in the United States. Probably gets a little bit too hot in the south, like deep south, um, but y'all know your climate as well. But it also makes a great house plant. And so, these are trimmings from um, an ivy that was outside and I will put a link to that video below. And essentially, I did the clippings and then shortened uh, the uh, ivy a little bit so that they wouldn't be like long tendrils, but rather shorter lengths. And then uh, about three or four weeks ago, I placed them in this uh, Bath and Body Works candle jar that I cleared out. And hopefully this will zoom in, but you can see little white roots growing off the sides of the ivy stems and those roots, um, I mean these stems just rooted all by themselves and so I'm actually going to let this root a little bit more. Um, I'm going to fill up the water a little bit too, sort of top it off and so I haven't had to change the water. Essentially I trimmed the ivy, plopped them in here, filled it up with water and all I've done is top the water off. Now it's been in um, indirect sunlight, it's not received direct sunlight and so um, it hasn't grown mold or become stagnant or anything like that, but you can change the water. That's the point I'm trying to say. You can change the water if it gets yucky. And so once these have more robust roots, and they probably could go ahead and do it, I'll put them into soil. And so I did that with pothos recently, and um, I'm doing it now with the ivy and the pothos because I want to have these looking beautiful for holiday time, for hostess gifts, um, Christmas gifts, those kinds of things. So I just wanted to bring an update on that. Things in the mail. So, Restoration Hardware, y'all, look at this. It is like the size of those old school dictionaries that used to be in elementary schools. There's one, or like at the library, you know, those huge dictionaries they put on a stand. This is the Restoration Hardware catalog, um, and it's intense. Y'all, I um, bought bed linens 
Uh, they have this hotel style bed linen that was on sale, uh, a, a comforter cover and a dust ruffle and I like the way that it looked. It held up really well so I would, I would recommend those. Um, do we have furniture from Restoration? We bought some uh, window panels at one point, but we don't have those anymore. I've redone that um, that bedroom, but you know, this is a little bit like crazy that this is such a big, I mean, magazine. It's pretty to look at or whatever. So I know that um, some folks really like this California sort of monochromatic aesthetic, and for me, I just used it for the linens and now I'm on this, this mailing list. Um, it does say that it's sourced from uh, responsible sources and that they're a part of the um, Forest Stewardship Council, but gosh, this is, I may just get off their mailing list because it costs a lot to make. There's a ton of paper resources. Um, I don't shop it really, and like, it probably costs a ton to ship and mail and like, think of all the gaps that postal carriers use to like, get this around. And it came in the mailbox and it's like, stuck in the mailbox but it's huge but if you um need magazines for school projects get on the restoration hardware list i guess but um just i thought that was a little bit loco um what else is going on so uh i gave myself a gift i subscribed to um flower magazine and it comes out um bi-monthly i think yeah september october so um there are probably like if it's two months together that means it's six issues um it is a, this is like such a fun magazine uh, to get. So if you are into that kind of thing, and I wanted to show this picture here. I mean, hopefully I can like get it into the camera, but this is a vanity and there's a nice little candle here on the vanity. I just like it when I see candles integrated into design. It helps me get ideas about candle placement so a lot of times in magazines you won't see uh, candles placed into design because everything, I mean everything, is product placement in um, these magazines. I mean it is selected, you have to have a connection, I mean so you may not see your favorite brands in there but it's fun to see where uh, designers have integrated um, candles. Now look at these. These are fun. So these are Cedar Stick Candles by Stick Candles Company. They're 100% beeswax and they're $35 for a pair. You can go to flowermagazineshop.com and find them. I'll see if I can put a, a link there. But I thought for winter and for even spring, like those pink and green ones for spring flowers, um, Halloween time, those sticks, um, lots and lots of fun Thanksgiving ideas for fall and harvest, not just the same kinds of um, you know the same kinds of uh, candles that you normally have the tapers I thought those were a lot of fun when to share them with you so flower magazine if you're into um, flower arranging and decor uh, this is a magazine to check out um, it's a it's a lot of fun speaking of which um, I am in a flower class it meets on Monday nights um, and this Monday was our sort of orientation class and during our class we sort of went over the materials what we need to bring next time uh, what we'll be covering in the class and the instructor taught us how to tie a bow now I made this bow from uh, wired ribbon and it's uh, like I was debating like what color to get but it's fun I thought for my first bow I did pretty well um, it's a little bit lopsided here, sort of heavier on this side, um, but I thought I'd do well. And then, then there's wire here, so if you want to wire it to a stick and you could put it into a flower basket or arrangement or tie it onto a basket, you know, why it kind of looks funereal or like a wedding. Um, so I might not use it, but I wanted to keep it because this is a four yard bow. And so just giving you some ideas, so at Michael's and I probably got 40% off, but the roll of um, ribbon was four yards. I used all the four yards to make this bow and it was like, that spool was five dollars. So five or six dollars. So when you think about getting a bow on different uh, packages and just like the experience there. So I'm leaning into having like the enriched aesthetic, sort of a maximalist kind of per, uh, perspective where we celebrate life with ribbons and bows and so um, I need to practice and so I'm going to find some ribbon that is less expensive than that to practice so I might be on the lookout at like thrift or consignment shops uh, to see if I can find some old ribbon or maybe even clearance because it really doesn't matter to me um, the uh, like 
the bow color and that kind of thing is mainly about practice. So practice. Um, but you know, I could put it here in my little ivy. All right, what's burning? <laughs> so um, I think that would be like coffee talk. What's burning? So what is burning is, the, and I'm not going to be very careful. Is this? Uh, Orchard Hayride Scentworks candle that I picked up at Kohl's and it is like this is probably the fourth burn um, But unfortunately, I haven't been able to have like good long burns and so uh, today is probably the third really long burn so um, overall Great burning candle the scent fragrance and throat is a little bit disappointing But I'll bring that to you in a review shortly you all voted in our recent Scentworks um, uh, I did Scarlet Leaves review and you all voted in that and I think I calculated more votes for autumn, for autumn for Orchard Hayride than any other. So I actually would like this to me, I would call it Dusty Apple. So that's the drag queen name for this particular Dusty Apple. Um, but it's in this beautiful chartreuse uh, glass votive and the candle is performing really well. Wicks are doing okay, wax pool is great. One of the weird things about this candle though is when the wax melts, it goes really dark emerald green, almost black. And so it looks like black wax, but then when it cools and hardens again, it goes back to the regular chartreuse green color. So a little bit interesting there. Hey, speaking of Scentworks candles, I'm almost to the point where the scarlet leaves is empty and so I've been burning it like crazy and it's burning right now in another room and uh, totally enjoying it maybe a new fall favorite uh, for a variety of reasons and so uh, be on the lookout for an empties video maybe just an empties video recapping the scent works um, scarlet leaves candle itself so it is, might be deserving of its own can of its own um, empty video Speaking of uh, leaves and scarlet leaves, so this is the leaves candle from Bath and Body Works. Many of you have posted that it's one of your favorite all-time Bath and Body Works candles or the favorite for fall. I can see why. It's been fun to burn this candle with um, the leaf punch outs in this particular wrap. And so I'm gonna be bringing a video review of this one very shortly. I've almost got it burned all the way down. So it's been burning a lot here uh, in the house this, well, I would say fall, but y'all it's like, 95 degrees outside seriously the like the real field temp is 100 degrees so it's hot here in charlotte and it's going to be hot for the next couple of days and it's just oh just it's hard to feel like fall when you're still baking outside and speaking of baking like the hurricane that came last week or so it didn't bring us any rain but what it did was like keep the rain away and we haven't had rain but i think there's going to be thunderstorms so the grass is crunchy things are hot and dry it's just like hot dog days of summer okay so mentioning summer y'all know i was burning uh summer candles and i'm still burning um country love something like that from country candle from their kringle candle company um but i have a few empties here that i have burned through in the past couple weeks and it is uh flowers in the sun by yankee candle this is a, a um Sweet Peony by William Sonoma, and then Orange and Bergamot uh, by Molten Brown. So let's go through them uh, quickly. Um, flowers in the Sun, so you can see that this candle burned really clean. I like this label. It was sort of like a collector's edition label. The label is different on the candle that they're offering now. You can see with the Aluma lid, I got really great performance from this candle. Um, nice uh, straight wick. The wax was beautiful in this yellow color. When it melts and then reforms the wax pool, it goes back to a light yellow that doesn't look discolored very much at all. Not a lot of smoke or soot, and the um, candle burned really clean so I'm really happy with the performance you know I am a big fan of the Illuminated I think that it really helps Yankee candles perform exceptionally well and especially when we look at candles like Kringle candle or a country their country candle line or Goose Creek you know they get a lot of soot or smoke around the top and you can't use your Illuminated and this is just makes like this could be a differentiator um, for me because the candle just looks great um, the fragrance notes on this so it is a bright floral I would love this candle I do love this candle it is a bright sunny day of sweet blooms the um, fragrance notes are lemon and orange in the top note with apple blossom um, pink water lilies and then um, sweet honey musk and so as the base a fantastic floral bright sunny days great for cleaning the house put it in the bathroom it smells sunny and bright and fresh 
um, you know, after the pool, great summer candle, um, lovely, 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 very, very light. I mean, to the point where it was almost like, is that thing putting out any fragrance at all? You really had to get your face right over it. So disappointing that the fragrance intensity and throw was so little. I mean, it was probably like a two or a one. Really, really light. It smells great on cold. It would be great if this um, had some fragrance intensity and throw. Moving now to the Sweet Peony Candle. So those of you who are old friends know that I was on this peony kick earlier this year. Um, and the Sweet Peony Candle from William Sonoma is a vegetable beeswax blend. Okay, so now y'all are going to say, John, that's not an empty, okay, because it's still got a lot of wax. But here's the thing. I got tired of this candle, and I didn't want to burn it anymore, and I didn't want to smell it anymore. So it had a real trouble uh, with tunneling. I, you know, Y'all know I have good candle hygiene. I let this uh, candle burn for a really long time trying to get it to make a wax pool. Now eventually with the English Rose Candle from Williams Sonoma, I was putting up with it because it smells so amazing. Uh, I was putting up with this uh, tunneling and the candle performance and eventually it got hot enough that the wax melted down and sort of um, like put itself back into the candle. Um, I, I just got tired of this. Let me tell you about this candle. So even though it sa says Sweet Peony, it's actually um, this is Flowers in the Sun. I made little notes. It's actually a floral blend that has gardenia, honeysuckle, plumeria, sweet lemon, and ylang ylang. So not a lot of like peony fragrance. It's just a sweet floral, a head, not a heady sweet floral, but like a musky sweet floral on coal. It's actually nice and complex, like a, a sophisticated fragrance. When it burns to me, it smells like cantaloupe or honeydew. And so I'm not in love with those fragrances and it just didn't appeal to me. And it almost got so sweet that like, not that it made my head hurt um, or gave me a headache, but just like, I don't know, like sort of a queasy feeling a little bit. And I don't know if like, I don't know, maybe I could just be feeling bad, but I just didn't like that melon fragrance. And so I wouldn't buy this again, mainly because it's not a peony candle and it's a melon candle, or at least that's this fragrance that I get. And that's okay because it looks like it's being discontinued at Williams Sonoma. You can't buy it online anymore. I'm just bringing this review to you. People ask, John, why do you review candles that aren't available anymore? Well, when I bought this candle, it was available. And the English Rose Candle from Williams Sonoma, phenomenal. If you can find that, it's nine bucks right now. Buy them out if you love rose fragrance. This candle, meh. And so, Candles live, candle reviews live on on the internet. Maybe somebody will see this again. They'll see the, it on eBay or on Amazon and say, hey, I'm thinking about this candle. Google the review and see what I shared and maybe that will help people in their purchase. So if you like a lemon or a le lemon, if you like a melon candle, get this candle. If you don't like a cantaloupe or melon candle, don't get this. With the candle performance that we've experienced um, and the weird fragrance, I won't buy this one again for me. Okay. One that I would buy again for me is this little dynamite candle from Molten Brown. So this candle is the orange bergamot candle. Um, it has a little frosted lip here, but the Molten Brown label is in this um, uh, silver font on the, on the yellow glass, creamy yellow glass votive. It's a heavy duty um, glass votive that's um, nice. And so you don't feel like it's little, you know, throwaway kind of thing, um, and it allows the candle to, to burn. Now, this candle burned itself way out. There's a little bit of dust and schmutz in there, mainly because um, I was burning it in the springtime and actually forgot about it, and it was on a shelf where it got a little bit of dust. And so, part, most of what you see there is dust, but it burned all the way out. Great performance out of this little sample candle. This came in a molten brown gift set that we got at Christmas time. So it has like different fragrance sets and had a candle in there. The orange bergamot flavor, flavor. Scent is masculine, lovely, fresh, clean, woodsy, cedary. Let's see, it says bergamot lemon with mandarin, orange, ginger, cinnamon with a base of neroli and musk phenomenal scent. It's got that sort of English politeness where it doesn't like knock you out, but it was a strong throw and an intense fragrance. So this is the sort of little votive size. You can find it in a 6.3 ounce size for $50 at Neiman Marcus. You can also get a three wick at $75. So um, the sampler set is a way to tiptoe into that. So if you're looking for Christmas, look for the Neiman Marcus sampler set. I love the um, Molten Brown series. We have um, pep 
tobacco pepper or something like that in the in the shower love 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 molten brown um check it out at neiman's if you're in the store give it a sniff orange or bergamot would totally buy this again um and uh would give this as a gift especially to guys because this is like a a fresh masculine fragrance to me like if we're going to if we're going to play gender roles masculine feminine but it's that musky neroli mature sort of fragrance it's definitely not a youthful sweet sugary um fragrance it's mature think english tweed that kind of thing yum 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 all right we have talked about the orange, uh, the orchard hayride. We've talked about leaves. We talked about our candles. We talked about um, restoration hardware. We talked about our bow and our our things. Nest fragrances is having a sale, friends, and so I am on that. I'm still so lucky. I'm on their mailing list, but seriously, you know, I bought for them before. Um, I want to get the pumpkin chai, and I'm debating about the size to get, just because I have spent a lot of money on fall candles. But I want to get the pumpkin chai, and I also want to get. Um, Faux de Bois from uh, Diptyque to compare uh, Fireside. Um, I want to compare Fireside, Faux de Bois, and the Homeworks Campfire Woods as sort of smoky um, uh, fire sort of inspired candles and maybe another one. Diptyque also has an oud fragrance that I might um, bring in to compare um, with the Rose Oud from um, Nest that I would, anyway, Nest is on sale right now for 25% off if you're looking um, uh, for Nest candles. I love the blue, the blue gardenia, blue, blue garden, blue, blue garden, that's it. Blue garden is sort of their um, spring fragrance. So I might just pick that up and, and planning for spring. Hey friends, thanks for watching. I appreciate you joining for this empties video. We'll be back with a, a leaves review. So uh, hang in there uh, for that a little bit later this week. See you next time.